hello and good afternoon everyone uh, Jana amazing talk really enjoyed it so thank you very much so yeah so it's a real honor to be a part of this uh, SDN community at the moment so as Andy already told you I'm going to talk about um, what it means to build an online community during these uncertain times and it'll roughly take about 10 to 15 minutes so I think we're all kind of feeling like this at the moment we're all stuck uh, I can't even think about the time, uh, how long it's actually been. If it's been eight weeks, it's been nine weeks, it's just been a nightmare being trapped in a small environment where we can't do as much. Now we're in a brand new norm, pretty much, which is really interesting. So I want everyone to think about everyone's journey at the moment. Maybe you're, you've got a full family of, let's say, five um, kids or family members being cooped up and trying to work while trying to share broadband, or you could be by yourself and isolated. And um, just want you to really think about that and hopefully I'll let you know things are going to get better, hopefully, in general. So as Andy already explained, I work as a senior service designer. I've worked for many different organizations. And I've been lucky enough to split my time up into almost a portfolio career. So 70% of my time I work with large corporates, that's where I get most of my income and expertise. But that extra 30% of the time I work with startups and social enterprises. And one of the social enterprises I'm going to talk about is Open IGO and the work I do with um, the London chapter. We've actually got one of our colleagues, Carl, here uh, in the group at the moment, so, so you can speak to him later on. I also work with uh, companies such as Founder Vine, who focus on diversity and supporting underrepresented um, founders across technology, design, and entrepreneurship in general, which is amazing. So going from Yana's um, talk, I really wanted to use a really interesting metaphor that helps you really understand what I think um, collaboration really means and how you build a different, different community. So I always break it up into a rule of three, and this is what I like to call friendships, partnerships, and relationships. And friendships are almost those people you've just met. You might have met them at a barbecue, in um, a past life and um, when we used to go outside and used to enjoy face-to-face -face communication but it's just getting to know each other it's understanding um, what they can provide for you and where that value exchange really can be but as you get to know each other it moves more into that partnership side of things where you know exactly what they can bring to the relationship or the community and you can share mutual value and you get that benefit there's that true level of reciprocity there and then the final part is relationships and I've used um, a picture of a dancing. So if anyone does tango or salsa or any type of close um, partnership type of dancing, you know that when you're dancing with someone and you're trying to get them to move, you don't force them. You open your body up. And you get people to move. So once you open your body up and you, you get people to understand that you're ready to move, they'll move with you. So and I think that's where real collaboration and community is the strongest, whether that's online or um offline if that makes sense face to face that's really the real, real, real value there is understanding the value of um, every single partner and even if they're they're not the best sometimes it's giving them energy and vice versa that's really the strength there but going on to our overall session today we're really going to be focusing on the power of open IGO and what it's all about so if anyone hasn't heard of open IGO before it's a subdivision of IGO uh, a well-known a design thinking agency that coined the term design thinking, human centered design, many years ago. Open IGO itself has been around for um, seven years now, I believe. So in 2013, that's when it was first around. I believe there's over 30 chapters worldwide, which is really amazing. Uh, it's a 100% volunteer based um, community where you can get designers, researchers, anyone that really cares and, and is passionate about purpose driven design or social impact to work together on really complex challenges. And we work with a number of different um, companies such as the Rockefeller Foundation, um, Vodafone America, and also um, the, the, the Bill and um, Melinda Gates Foundation in general. And we really focus on the circular economy, sustainability, food systems, and global equality, which is really key. And that goes down to my chapter really. Uh, and I say mine in terms of we've got a group of amazing people working with us. I was one of the founding members three years ago and we were able to develop a small community, but it's still valuable. There's some amazing people there that work together and share ideas and really help them create real value. We've built some amazing ideas from working to like on Mac to help them really figure out how they can um, 
develop and change uh, how they use off-cut materials through prototyping and actually send us bags full of um, night material off-cuts which we can play around with and design new concepts so there was a level of um, research ideation and prototyping those sessions and those were fantastic they were face to face it was so engaging it was a wonderful experience i've spoken about this um, many times in march we were going to run a workshop around um, the food system sustainability um, prize which is going to be an amazing event but as you may know what happened covid hit and it was all a massive nightmare we just really didn't know what to do um, so myself and all the other chapters had to really think how we can pivot at this time so um, i really hate the term social distancing and i think it's we should really change it around to physical distancing because that's what it is we still need to be social as humans um, being cramped up in our um, houses all the time we're just not like that we are social animals if that makes sense so we need to work with each other so um, through that time we were able to really pivot and as all designers do i put this into a how might we question so um, how might we support online and local communities really reimagine um, social challenges using a systematic approach so that's thinking about all different factors the processes the systems the touch points are really key to making something remote really successful and guess what it actually worked funny enough so this is not just our chapter but all well, half of the chapters that were involved so the results that andy gave you that was probably two weeks ago but since then it's even grown even further so this is probably the most recent um, statistics at the moment so we're able to launch two fantastic challenges one around and business pivoting so help helping um, local businesses really trying to pivot to to support resilience in the local environment as well as helping um, another challenge so another challenge was around helping reimagining learning in some cases so helping school teachers educators parents and students adapt to the new world how can you learn remotely and funny enough that challenge around reimagining learning is still um, going on at the moment so you can go on the open idea and website and look at some of the ideas and if you're really interested submit something that could be really valuable to the community and you never know that idea could go further going forward and i think that's still open until uh, the 26th of this month so you've still got some time so there's some amazing figures but i just wanted to quickly go through today and this is going to be the real meat and potatoes of the talk it's going to focus on these four themes which is um community empowerment and um, playful experimentation thoughtful storytelling and also understanding the importance of inclusive design so there are some key follow-on forms um, themes from yana's talk and i just want to go into them in a little more detail so the first one is really around getting people to come together so it wasn't just one chapter that was successful we were able to learn through speaking to each other on calls engaging with each other and sometimes even partnering and working together so i remember that um, los angeles san francisco and the new york chapter actually ran an online event by themselves and they really focus on their local community challenges and how to actually tell a really positive story in that case which was powerful um, for open idea it's really what we really value is learning by doing and so getting people together to not just talk about the issue but actually think about how they can engage and create and create solutions is really powerful so in any case that's one of the key things you should really take away in general and the thing is this whole lockdown is the hugest um online world experiment at the moment businesses uh, social media um, outlets, communities have to change the way they think. And um, Open Idea is no different in any way at all. And this, the second point is really around um, play for experimentation. And fine enough, this is actually a picture from um, one of the places I work at the moment at BSI. I work as um, a service designer there, working in their innovation um, labs, which is quite fun at the moment. But had playing games and getting to know each other is really important. So we had special half days. So I still have my amazing hat right here, uh, which you can probably see in the corner there, but um, showing people how you can be creative and, being sh and showing that you're human is really important. So engaging with each other and just sometimes goofing off. I think when it comes to design, in some cases, especially when it's around such a sensitive and serious social problem, we sometimes forget the human aspect of things, especially online, there is that distance as well. So just playing around, goofing around and sharing stories can be 
really important. Just don't get too serious in some cases. The third point is really around um, thoughtful storytelling. So throughout all our campaigns, our focus really on um, the London Open IDO um, case, we focus on how can we tell a story that really puts the participant that might be interested on a journey. We use different types of media. Uh, we're not afraid to play around, to be completely honest. So even when we advertised in the events, uh, help local businesses fight back, the gloves are off, and we were trying to play around with um, fun play, fun logo, fun images that can really connect, and telling stories as well. So if you look at the top image, um, that image of um, local businesses, what they're fighting, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, sharing those stories with people is really important. So that's something that can really come back um, and help. Uh, participants, especially online, really um, build empathy for the problem and how they can create really amazing ideas in general. And we had also people that really wanted to jump in. Uh, so one of our um, participants actually drew this amazing illustration that um, identifies some of our speakers and what we talked about for one of our, one of our um, challenges. And I think just getting the community involved and em empowering them to learn is, is something that's really important in general. And then the final point, which is really around um, inclusivity. So I think we're quite privileged, especially if you live in um, the Western world or London, where you've got fantastic technology bandwidth, but you've got to think about everyone that's involved. A lot of the open IGO uh, workshops at the moment we've been running and challenges have been focused around uh, looking at these big challenges, but who are the key people we're trying to solve for? And can we make it accessible for everyone? So whether you've got um, a disability, for example, or if you're in a faraway country where your internet and your language barriers could be a problem, how can we get them involved in some way? And one of the challenges that we face is that when we were running online workshops using Muriel, we found that some people were using their phone and they couldn't use um, Muriel at that time. How can we overcome those key challenges? It's just trying to think outside of the box and making sure that everyone's connected, everyone matters really. Uh, across open IGO and especially London open IGO chapter, we want to make sure that everyone's included and everyone is empowered to use design in the right way. Uh, I've kind of summarized these lessons. So it's a lot of what I've discussed already. I realize I've only got um, 10 minutes, so I'm not going to go on too long here, but some of these themes I've already discussed already. It's trying to create um, a culture around the community. It's having time to play it's trying to think small first of all, so start locally, then think about how you can scale, especially online, and then how you can go beyond certain challenges with um, technology and language as a barrier. So it's a little bit of homework for all of you, actually. Uh, if you're interested, we can probably talk about this offline, but I found some really interesting links that are trying to change the way that people really think about, um, first of all, um, community design, especially when it's remote, as well as a, a fantastic company called not everyday life. So they're a research company that anyone can be become a researcher. You can just apply and you can talk to people just so you can understand a little bit more about their problems, their days, and it's a crowdsourced type of platform. So just to conclude, if you're interested in any further challenges, please feel free to contact us. Um, the links are here and I think uh, Andy's going to share that around. And of course, please contact me as well. And if you're interested, I'm on LinkedIn. I write sometimes on media. I think that's it really. So any questions? Katie, go ahead. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Daniel. That was really great getting an insight into what you guys are up to at the Open IDEO London chapter as well. Um, I've engaged with the uh, Reimagining Education Challenge and I popped a link into the chat there so everybody should go on and have a look. Um, we do have a couple of questions for you, Daniel, if you don't mind. Um, one I'm going to start with, which I really, really liked, and a couple of other people have been using the like buttons on there to highlight the questions. So you spoke about playful experimentation, and I think that's really important in the, in the uh, current situation that we're in at the moment. Have there been any moments of goofiness that have went badly, that have went wrong, um, and what's appropriate or a complete no when it comes to a playful experimentation? Oh, that's a really important question. So thank you for sharing that. So luckily, no, nothing has really gone bad from what I can remember. And if something has gone really, really terrible, it's literally escaped me. So I've um, taken it out of my memory. But um, going back to the second part of that question, I think knowing where the lines are is making sure that you're not making fun of anyone 
in the room or out of the room it's all inclusive so there's a difference between having a laugh or having a laugh at someone else's expense yeah so hopefully that answers your question fantastic yeah fantastic um, so you sort of touched on this a little bit, um, but how, how are you guys trying to engage, maybe a couple of specific things, that, how are you trying to engage with the remote or the under-reserved communities remotely when internet and tech might not be widely available? Do you have any direct examples of what you've been up to? We're still working around that actually, so that's um, something we're thinking about. So one of the things I forgot to actually explain before is that all, all the chapters online we have we have one-on-one -on -one conversations to share ideas and share thoughts but we, every month we have a group all all hands call for all the chapters and that's where we can share ideas and share insights mm -hmm. so that is a good question it's something i can definitely pick up on um for our next all, all hands call yeah i chapters. think we're very much all in that position at the moment of how do we reach those hard to reach people um, and a question that's come in on the chat there, um, how did you overcome the challenge of participants viewing noodles on their phones? Well, that's quite interesting. So um, most of the time it's always a surprise. So as well as being a host on some occasions for some of these chapters, I'm a facilitator. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just simple as, um, okay, then if you can just send me uh, your ideas through the chat feature and then we can yeah. just add it to the neural board and we can send you the version later on. Mm -hmm. And obviously they can still share their ideas and thoughts, uh, but it's not as immersive as being able to use a mural board and interact straight away. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Fab, I think, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Another couple of questions about um, disengagement. So there's one here, if society was a workplace, how do you get the actively disengaged members participating and engaged in using design moving forward? That's a cracker mm. to end. <laughs> That is a cracker. So one simple statement, what is in it for them? So yep. it's all around empathy and making sure that they are really valued and heard. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in just saying, oh, we're going to do this because it's worked in the past. Think about different stakeholders, um, their pain points, their challenges, what really motivate them over time. This is classic um, design thinking 101 really, but we don't really practice it enough, which is a shame. So it's listening and trying to figure out where the little cracks in um, serving people in the right way well i don't think you could have answered that better fantastic thank you very much i'll pass back to you andy <laughs>